All right, welcome to another painting tutorial for Blood Angels Captain Carlane. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce that properly, but I'm going to guess that's it. Here's the guy spinning around. I did the showcase model uh, showcase video of this, same one, just a little slower. So what I did is started out by doing some sub assemblies and put them on some paper clips by just drilling a hole and super gluing it in there with just a touch of super glue and spray painting everything black. And now I'm just going uh, with a base coat of Mephiston Red over all the red power armor. Um, not worried about too, too much about getting it all in the exact right areas, but trying to avoid all the other colors, generally speaking. Uh, so there's an idea of what it looks like after sort of two thin coats of all that. Okay, then going with lead belcher here, uh, getting all the silver bits, trying to get those uh, nicely base coated. I like to do the metallics near the beginning of my base coating, just because I find that they're a bit messier and a little bit harder to deal with, so I end up going a little bit... Uh, rougher with them, trying to get them on, whatever. <clears throat> okay, Balthazar Gold for the gold base coats here. And uh, yeah, using that uh, spinorama, uh, you can kind of tell which parts are gold. And I kind of followed the, the GW um, uh, Evy Metal version or whatever, the one they have on the website, just to give me a guide as to what was gold, what was black, and all that sort of thing. Obviously, there's no rules about what you have to do, what, but uh, I generally follow most of the GW painting schemes. So yeah, just painting those on all the gold bits, and uh, I like to do all my base coats uh, in one go. This helps me plan out the model, and then I don't have to go back and retouch things later. Um, not quite as much, anyways. So Abaddon Black on all of the black bits, and uh, mostly this is a touch-up because... Uh, it should have been covered by the spray paint and um, anything that I might have painted over the edges with some of the other colors. So yeah, putting all the base coats on first um, helps you realize the, you know, the color scheme that you're going to be doing here and uh, making sure they get all the different colors base coated at once. And uh, you can kind of do your touch-ups as you go with each of the separate layers if you do it that way. You can, if you make a mistake on one of the colors, you can fix it when you do the next one. And if that's not totally right, then you can touch it up a bit. But it usually, uh, usually gets most of it that way. Okay, moving over to Bugman's Glow for some of the uh, flesh here on the, the face. There we go. Just doing that nice and quick. So at this point, you can see I'm, I'm really trying to stay kind of uh, within the lines, uh, if you will. Uh, XV88 for the base coat on the, uh, the blonde hair. And uh, again, kind of following the, the White Dwarf painting guide um, for some of these colors. So blonde hair, doing the XV88 base coat, and that sort of thing. Nagaroth Knight for all the gemstones. So I typically uh, do these purple on my Blood Angels. And uh, the idea there is that they need to contrast the red armor just a bit. Uh, obviously, you can do them red, but they won't stand out quite as much. Or you could do them some sort of a glowy thing if you're airbrushing or whatever. Okay, so Agrax Earthshade, so I'm trying to paint this in all of the recesses. Um, some of these uh, areas here, uh, the paint isn't properly uh, on there, so it's like a bit thin in some areas. So um, on some of the red bits, I uh, have to go back and touch it up with Mephiston Red later. Okay, so putting the, uh, the Agrax Earthshade on all the, um, the gold bits as well. And you can see trying to paint in some of the recesses of the Blood Angels armor. And uh, yeah, it's going around getting everything like that. So once you have the base coats on and you're starting to do the washes, that's kind of, for me, that's the home free step on the model. All the rest of the stuff I really enjoy doing. And uh, it's getting the base coats on and planned out. And then uh, the washes uh, that takes kind of the most time and maybe the least rewarding. The model kind of looks like junk uh, when it's just the, the solid colors. But uh, once you start adding the washes, you can kind of see how it's going to fix up. Okay, so some Newland oil there for the other metallics, and then going back with the med over all of the base colors. So just uh, trying to get all the solid areas nice uh, bright red, <clears throat> and this will help uh, make sure that I have a, a nice final red that's, that's pretty solid looking. So yeah, just trying to avoid some of the, the recesses and the hollow bits there, and uh, not too worried about getting this perfect. It'll help, it'll blend a little bit with the previous layer, um, so that uh, that works with you. Okay, so using some uh, some of the Dark Reaper here, uh, highlighting up that black. Thin down a bit with your uh, Lantham Medium. And that just helps it kind of go on a little bit thinner, a little bit more transparent. It helps it blend with the previous layer. 
which in this case is pure black. All right, Thunderhawk Blue for the second highlight on all the black bits. And so this is going to be kind of a, an edge highlight, just trying to pick out those edges a little bit and uh, using the side of the brush on all the sh sharp corners um, to help there. You can see I just kind of do it in a couple strokes, kind of like you're sketching with a pencil, <clears throat> just to make sure that you, uh, you don't go on too thin. It's always easier to add a little bit more paint than it is to take it off. And you can see I kind of mess it up a little bit there, but uh, that's fine. Okay, Screaming Skull highlight on the inside of this cloak, and uh, I don't think there's actually any other really bone colors on this. Um, and you can see there that it's pretty harsh highlight, so uh, I'm gonna have to go back and, and blend that quite a bit. So just using a bit of a lanthanum medium, and uh, sometimes it's a good idea to mix 50-50 with the previous layer, just so that you can uh, get like a kind of a mid-tone in between there, and uh, yeah, get rid of that, that stark, stark uh, transition. Okay, some Evil Sun Scarlet for the, the red now. And just trying to go around and get all the edges. So this isn't uh, super, super obvious. Um, it doesn't really stand out that much against the previous layer, but it, I mean, it does give you the impression of uh, your depth on the model, which is why you're doing all these layer highlights. In fact, I mean, you, if you painted the, the model of the bright red to start with, obviously that would make it look nice and bright on the table, but then you wouldn't have any of the shadows. And uh, sort of the, the shadows really give you the, the impression of uh, depth, but uh, in order to get those shows, you kind of have to work up towards the bright. So um, you're kind of working backwards, uh, if you will. And uh, yeah, so going along, doing all the gold highlights here, I'm trying to pick out all the flat surfaces on everything. And uh, see, I've also uh, done some of the sub-assemblies, and the idea is that once the base coat and shades are on, um, you can start assembling things because you don't need to get into those deep, dark areas anyways, because they're not going to stay, uh, not going to get highlighted anyways. Just working on all the gold bits here. Uh, some Dawnstone now for highlighting the Crux Terminus, and uh, just trying to get all the flat edges on that. Those skulls are always a little bit of a pain because uh, they're not uh, not a lot of detail on them, so you're trying to blend over a really smooth surface. Uh, for the base, um, because I, I assembled him after, I just uh, drilled a hole through the sandy base. Um, I'd already dry brushed it and done all that before I put him on, so it actually was a nice way of doing it. And rather than the feet sinking into the uh, into the sand, kind of sit on top of it, which is a bit nicer. <clears throat> Okay, doing the second highlight there on the, the Terminus. And whenever I do the second highlight, I really just try to focus on the edges and, uh, and yeah, just get catch those highlights. So Baylor Brown now for the highlight hair. And just uh, trying to pick up the bright edges there and some of the main flat surface there. I'll get some of the, the detail added to that using the, the subsequent highlights. But making sure that I get all the, the texture in the actual hair. Easy Desert. For the next highlight, and you can see just using the edge of the brush, try to get those uh, those bits there, and then oh, out of focus a bit, <clears throat> just try to get some of the texture onto the hair there. Okay, could I flesh tone for the first highlight on the skin? And you can see just trying to follow all of the shapes on the face. And now Kislev Flesh um, for the next highlight on there. And uh, yeah, just trying to work towards the edges, pick out some of those brighter areas. And uh, yeah, bring out some more detail. Okay, Iron Breaker now going on all the uh, the, the silver bits uh, for highlighting. So just trying to paint up all the, the brighter edges. Those chains are silver, nice, nice contrast to the gold that's behind them. Um, yeah, some really nice details in this model. Uh, the pose is maybe a touch awkward, um, you know, kind of an iconic Games Workshop pose where he's kind of got this weird stance frozen in time, but uh, yeah, I guess it works. And now Runefang Steel for the final highlight on the silver and uh, gold as well. So this nice bright uh, highlight, just little specks here and there, you can hardly see it. And then some of the edges on the gold doing that same sort of thing, and that just being a bit brighter than a pure gold. 
I find that the the gold highlight for GW uh, goes on kind of thin, so it doesn't. It's very translucent. So if you wanted to put it on after that one, that would uh, that would brighten up some of the gold bits as well. Okay, Xerxes purple here for the uh, highlighting all the gemstones. You can see there's lots of them. Um, I think I also do the uh, the purity seals the same thing. Uh, Gene Steeler purple for the next highlight. That gemstone didn't turn out very well. It doesn't have a very nice edge on it. So you can see just working towards the bottoms of them to kind of have it as if the, the, the highlights catching off the bottom there and then there'll be a, a nice glint on the top. Some ungore flesh for the edge highlighting on the, uh, the armor. So it's better to use a fleshy color than it is to use an orange or a yellow. Uh, just keeps the armor a bit more red rather than being an orange. Um, and as you can see, I'm just trying to focus on the really sharp edges that would kind of stick out and be most noticeable. And that's it. So uh, you can see the, the final assembly right there with a little bit of static grass on the bottom. Really cool looking model. Uh, if you want to check out the showcase, you can see this rotation in slower. Um, as well, all the painting uh, tutorial guides that I do will be on my blog um, with the guides that are looking just like this sort of thing along with the, uh, the individual stuff. Anyways, if you have any comments or questions or suggestions for future videos, please post a comment and make sure you subscribe and share this around the social networks. See you next time.